So if you remember this screen, chances are you had a pretty rad childhood. So imagine my excitement when someone on the internet told me that they had a bunch of TI and old stuff for me. And uh, I thought they had a few things. I knew they had a computer. I knew they had some drives and stuff like that. But it turns out that they had this much Texas Instruments stuff for me um, coming down here. And then we have the whole computer and the expansion box. So this is the TI-99-4A, and this is the first time I've had my hands on one since the 80s. And uh, they're not that expensive. They go, um, you find them for $40, $50, up to $100. And you can see this case kind of got on top of this. We'll have to clean that up. But uh, you can find them fairly often on eBay and stuff like that. A lot of them are missing the power cord and, uh, you know, so we'll see what I have in terms of that kind of stuff. But this was a very accessible home computer back in the 1980s. They sold millions of them. As you can see, we have a cartridge slot here and TI-99 Extended Basic. And most people either got their software on cartridges and if they wanted to save anything, they would save it on cassette, which was always fun. Um, that being said, there was an accessory for this thing. This computer, I think, started out around $600. There was an accessory that cost about $1,500 for it that would give you a floppy drive and some expansion cards. Now, that wasn't the only way to expand it. It did have this little slot on the side where you would put side cards and side cars. And uh, this one's a little rough on top, but I think the inside's fine. This was a speech synthesizer that would give your games um, the ability to talk and to, uh, you know, actually speak. And the idea with these sidecars is that they could just, you could just keep going out the side of them, but that got kind of unwieldy. So people thought, well, what we really need is a big old expansion box. And let me show you a big old expansion box. So this monstrosity, is known as the PEB, the uh, Peripheral Expansion Box, and it came with something that would plug into the side of the computer with this hefty rubber-coated ribbon cable, and it offered a floppy drive. I don't want to drop this thing. It offered a floppy drive. <laughs> ah, there we go and a bunch of expansion ports. Let me slide over here so you can see this side of it. This is the uh, expansion system. And I feel like some of them said peripheral expansion box here. So I don't know if this is a newer one or an older one. Um, and then on the back, you can see that various cards would stick out the back if they had something to expand. Now my understanding is that this one has an extra 64K of RAM as well as these other expansion cards. So let's take a look. Now I've got the cover off this thing and I'm gonna pull this out. This is the Texas Instruments flex cable interface, which is what uh, connects this thing to the TI-99. I'm gonna get this out of the way because it is in the way. And as you can see, we've got extra cards in here. So let's start sliding them out and generally looking at them. This has got, uh, that would be a parallel port and then I don't know what this thing is on the bottom, but this is an RS-232, so I guess it's a serial port. Um, it's an RS-232 card, and again, I have no idea what that little connector is on the bottom. So one of the things, I used this computer as a kid. We obviously did not have the expansion bus, and um, I was like five and six years old. So although I have a lot of fond memories of using it, I definitely did not understand any of this kind of stuff back in the day. So we've got a 32K uh, memory expansion in here, and then we have, which may have been upgraded, he said 64, so I don't know if that was just misremembering or what, but um, then we have the disc controller, which is attached to this floppy drive over here. So that's pretty much all that's in here. It's all power supply and floppy drive. I think there may be more of these things. So there's also not one, but two external floppy drives. And uh, these are 90 kilobyte floppy drives. And uh, 
They were $500 each, and the controller for this thing was $300. Um, so software on floppy for the TI is relatively rare, but I got a pile of that. Before we get to the uh, software, I'd like to take a look at some of the bonus hardware that was included. <laughs> All right, so what was in the box? Well, another TI-99, and what was below that? Another TI-99, missing one key, but knowing this guy, he probably saved it. He was a uh, software developer, and so he, um, <clears throat> he actually used this thing for productivity, and he wrote uh, some software for it that his company used, and uh, yeah, so he had all kinds of stuff. So um, this is the power cord for the thing, and these things were pretty uh, rare. They would go missing a lot in um, the ones on eBay. You see them without power cord, without power cord. So uh, you know that's part of the deal is that people test the people can't test the computer, or uh, they know it's bad and they don't want to test the computer, so it doesn't come with the power cord. Um, but I've got one there at least. We'll see if there's any more. Um, securities analysis like see this guy was i mean he had some games but he was also into um you know writing software and assembly language and you know all that kind of stuff so uh we have a central oh that's what that thing was for on the bottom of that rs232 thing there was a place to put a little ribbon cable like that and this is a centronics to whatever that is 12 15 20 pin uh connector there and then we've got this doohickey, which looks somewhat homemade. This is a, oh no, is this a, okay, no, this is a video cable. So this would let it use composite out, I'm guessing, is the plan. And this looks definitely homemade. And then we've got a normal power cable right here. Uh, so we've got a couple of Atari joysticks, which I know were pretty popular to use with this thing. But you actually, from what I understand, you can't just plug... Uh, this one's had some work done. You can't just plug an Atari joystick in the side, although the ports are the same. I think uh, it was expecting two joysticks. The original TI-99 4A had um, two joysticks that were wired together. So you always had to sit somewhat close to your friends. And so I'm guessing there's gonna be an adapter in here somewhere to use this with the TI-99. Um, let's go through here quickly. We've got Microsoft Multiplan, which uh, I don't know. I th somebody said that it was similar to uh, Excel, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Multiplan. Uh, so I had no idea that Microsoft made software uh, for the TI-99 in the 80s. Uh, let's see, over here we've got another uh, power brick. I don't know what this is. This is uh, for use with text instruments adapters only. What's that say there? This is a power, oh, it just says the power supply. So this is another TI-99 power supply. This one looks a little newer. Maybe it's an, uh, maybe it's an updated one. What the heck is this? Oh, this is the thing I was talking about. So this is a, uh, this is an adapter, apparently homemade to use um, two of those, my cat's playing in the box, to use the uh, Atari joysticks in the T-99 port. And I'm guessing this might have just stuck right in the side like a side card. I don't think he used any kind of cable uh, on there. I'm guessing this just stuck right in the side of the thing. Let's, let's give that a shot. I'm guessing that's why uh, there's probably some super glue on here and that probably breathed over on that. But yeah, so we've got like a homemade sidecar in a project box, which is pretty funny. Um, We've got the uh, little modulator, uh, yeah, it's a video modulator there. It's a big old chunky thing compared to the Atari one. Uh, let's see, we've got another homemade peripheral. This is awesome. Okay, what the heck is this? Okay, hold on, let's, all right, so we have two phono outs. This has to be for the cassette port or something like that. I'm guessing somehow this was used to, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe control a tape deck or something like that. Maybe even a, I don't know. I was going to say like a, mo a uh, modem that had, uh, you know, like some kind of coupler on it. I have no idea. Oh, 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 oh. We have a, another weird breakout cable. No clue what that is. Um, again, that ha it looks, it feels like a cassette port type thing to me. Uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll come across something that'll use it. So we have another power brick that is for something, Codaphone, so I'll have to remember that. Um, here we have a, 
module. This doesn't look like it goes inside the computer. This is a 64K print buffer. <laughs> so I'm guessing, yeah, the one Centronics would go into here and uh, you could have 64K, which was a lot back in the day, um, <laughs> of a print buffer for, I mean, I guess here's the thing. Like, would it have to be just for Texas Instruments? I mean, if you're grabbing the Centronics, this might not be just a Texas Instruments only device. Uh, repeat, what the heck is this? That is interesting, the Micro Stuffer Print Buffer. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, okay, we have another one of those modulators for the TV, which is good to have a backup. Uh, got a couple of cables here for something, guessing the floppy drives. Um, got some more software over here. We won't go through every single cartridge the thing has. Maybe I'll give you a quick overview, but this is just the cartridges that were in the box with the hardware. Um, <coughs> this one is called Hustle. Uh, so this is, oh yeah, Hustle, uh, solid state software. So some kind of horse racing game. We have a uh, beginning grammar, terminal emulator two, Tunnels of Doom, Editor and Assembler. Now this guy wrote in Basic and Assembler, so there's a lot of Assembler stuff around. Uh, personal Record Keeping. Wow, this one's heavy, Mini Memory. I wonder if this gave extra RAM to the computer while plugged into the cartridge slot if you were using the disk drive. That is interesting, oops. Home Financial Decisions and Household Budget Management. Very interesting stuff. In totally unrelated hardware, we have this uh, Coleco Telstar tennis hockey handball. And I'm guessing it's some kind of pong type game. I haven't looked this one up yet, but I mean, you've only got dials on this side. Um, <clears throat> so some kind of little homemade, or not homemade, but a uh, old timey video game thing. Oh, it uses six C cell battery. Should we dare open it up and see uh, how bad it is on the inside? We'll save that for another video. So we're gonna go through this relatively quickly. You can see a bunch of the software at once um, here. These are, what is that? Oh, Pac-Man, Centipede. These might've been the ones that came with, ooh, Donkey Kong. Sounds a little worse for wear. Might be pulling that one apart. Um, but these are some of the cartridges that came with it. Uh, now, a lot of this stuff actually came with boxes. There's brand new boxes that have been saved in a box for this stuff. Um, the disc stuff I'm guessing is a lot more rare. Um, so, I mean, we have Microsoft Multiplan and uh, let's see, Atari, this is the TI Writer Multiplan. Uh, we have Editor and Assembler for this thing. Uh, all kinds of just weird stuff. I mean, who knows if this is any good. Home computer on disc. Uh, I'm probably gonna need something like a Grease Weasel or one of these other, uh, you know, things that are made for recovering this kind of software to back this stuff up. And I definitely want to back it up. Uh, we're not gonna go through every bit of it, but we have business and games and funnel web and PR base. So I'm guessing an early database and uh, more games and more games and uh, multi-plan and ghost Qbert midnight. I guess that means Qbert. Um, you know, wow, just all kinds of weird stuff structural engineering library moment dynamic concrete and trust uh so this is <laughs> i mean uh yeah i mean there's just crazy amounts of software that probably hasn't been seen in a while better banners like i mean i could imagine for the commodore i could imagine for the early ibms but i'm guessing banner software for the ti-99 is pretty dang rare um so anyway that is the software. The last piece of actual hardware to come with this thing is this NEC color monitor. It's from 1984 and has all the proper inputs that would make it great for hooking up Ataris and obviously TI-99s. I have no idea if this thing works. I'm gonna go through the rest of this stuff relatively quickly, but I think it's really worth seeing it. Um, we have, and there's boxes of boxes, but we have, um, you know, all of the original boxes for these games, which is crazy. I mean, Parsec, one of my favorite games as a kid, was $40, thirty seven eighty eight at uh, Kmart. And I mean, just the original boxes for all of this stuff, the Star Wars game and application software and all this kind of stuff. Um, 
Over here we have a bunch of books. We have a bunch of the original reference manuals, uh, the TI-99 guide, the basic guide. He actually said that he pulled some of these things apart and put them in binders also. We have the, uh, the original manuals for these uh, expansion cards and even the printer buffer. Uh, so there is the micro stuffer printer buffer um, manual there. Uh, just, I mean, an insane amount of information. Disk memory system, the drive controller, the expansion box, like all of these manuals are here for my enjoyment and maybe my diagnosis uh so we have the ti word processor which you have the book and i think the cartridges oh no there are cartridges here uh disk manager and ti writer word processor and i'm guessing some of the other stuff is there because this guy doesn't look like he lost much of anything um and this one i don't know it's just a whole bunch of stuff I think, okay, so what he wrote his own software that was like actually in use, and I think he wrote the manual for it. This is the PR based personal record management system by William Warren. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. It's got his CompuServe address. We've got a couple of years of um, Home Computer Magazine. I thought this was original, or I guess Computer Magazine, Home Computer Magazine. I thought this stuff was all TI stuff, but this is actually. A lot of general computer stuff. You've got um, Cosby saying, let's grab a drink and talk about the TI-99. We have the TI-99er newsletter from 1985. Holy cow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, all this home computer magazine stuff. Uh, a couple years worth of computer magazines, he said in here. Last and maybe least for some of you guys, but I'm excited about it. We have um, the Fundamentals of Assembly Language book and another Assembly Language book. I love using the blocks there. We have the manual for the memory, the mini memory manager. Uh, 4K of RAM, 4K of ROM, and 6K of um, graphics read-only memory that little cartridge adds. Uh, so that's pretty sweet we have these look like the books that would come in all of the different uh games so they're all here security analysis that is very interesting uh security analysis techniques for financial tools that can help you make sound investment oh securities like securities like securities exchange commission there we go that makes a little more sense um nobody cared about security back in the day so we got ti99 basic uh, we have the original manual for Microsoft Multiplayer. I love that there's a little asterisk after Microsoft. That's kind of funny. Uh, Microsoft and Multiplayer are trademarks of Microsoft Corporation. Uh, so anyway, we have their program discs and cartridges. Uh, we have, this is the editor assembler debugger, you know, thing uh, for that and then i think these two are the yeah these are the other books that we already had but they're in binder form and then beginning assembly language for the ti home computer like some dude wrote this and uh bound it himself and put it out there so this stuff is just a treasure trove if you're super into uh ti99 stuff please let me know what i have here because i honestly have no clue uh again i played parsec and alpiner as a kid did not write any assembly language in the 80s on this thing so anyway if you made it this far through the video, I appreciate it. You are a saint, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.